Behind the Mask, submission from Piece of a Puzzle. CNIB Foundation logo in the top right-hand corner and a photograph of a face mask in the center. Who are you? Note 1. Note 1 reads, A piece written during the global pandemic of 2024, Behind the Mask, that was put on by CNIB for blind writers to record their thoughts about the global pandemic. By Piece of a Puzzle. This pandemic has been ongoing for eight months now. My answers in the before times, note two. Note two reads, before times, refers to the time before COVID-19. It is a term I first heard used by Matt Galloway on CBC Radio 1. Are sometimes different now and sometimes the same. Some make me feel very hopeful, while others cause me to feel very sad and hopeless. Who are you, you might ask? I am a Christian who, despite all that is happening, has hope. My faith gives me hope. I may not see God, but he is still working. I may not hear God, but he is still speaking. My faith reminds me that God never slumbers or sleeps. Note 3. Note 3 reads Psalm 121. He never stops working. No matter how out of control this world may seem, even if I don't understand what God is doing, even if I don't know his plan. I have lived on this earth long enough to know that my God is always working. Note 4. Note 4 reads, A lot of the words in this paragraph are taken from the song Waymaker, written by Sinatch, December 2015. Who are you, you might say? I am a non-scouting volunteer at an International Scouts Canada camp. At this camp, there are youth, scouters, guiders, and volunteers from the Scout Guide Movement attending from the United States and Canada. This is where I run an activity on disability awareness with the person who supports me during camp. I am a volunteer at a local psychiatric hospital and a local challenger baseball umpire. Most of the time, I am a cheerleader, not an umpire, for every kid that comes by third base. In pandemic times, I would say I am a volunteer, but not right now. Who are you, you might ask? In the before times, I would say I am a political geek and a news junkie. I know what is happening all over the world. I listen to CBC Radio 1 most of my waking hours when I'm not doing other things. At this time, this very weird and confusing time, I would say the same things, but for the first time since I was eight years old, over 40 years ago, I have had to limit my news consumption on a daily basis. I have done this for my own mental health. I cannot totally eliminate my media consumption because it is an important part of my life, but it is still limited. Who are you? You might inquire. I am an independent woman who lives with disabilities, medical conditions, and mental illnesses. I am a part-time AAC user, augmentative and alternative communication. There are times when the words in my head will not come out of my mouth, and I am non-speaking or minimally speaking. I am able to live independently with three hours a week of homemaking help. I like to go out in the spring, summer, and fall. Winter and wheelchairs just don't get along. Now, at this peculiar time in history, my homemaking services have been deemed inessential. My life has drastically changed. My house is a mess. I have not been out but four times since last March because I have an autoimmune disorder. It is the safest thing to do. My mental health is far from good. I miss my road trips on the bus. I miss my church. I miss contributing to society through my volunteer work. My aunt, the one supportive family member I have, is in her mid-70s and is a United States citizen. With the Canada-United States border being closed, I know in reality that I may never see her in person again. It is a sad, frustrating, and lonely time. Who are you, you might wonder. I am a reader. I was in the before times, and I still am during these strange times. The pandemic has given me more time to read, and I have been reading. This continues to give me much joy and pleasure. It is one of the things that is making life worth living right now. Reading takes me places I cannot go, teaches me things I do not know, makes me wonder, imagine, 
and grow. You might see me and remark, who are you? I am a person who likes to learn and think. I would have said that I thought a lot in the before times. I would have said that I homeschool myself and that I am taking a course on ministering with and to people with disabilities and their families in the church. I have recently had to quit taking this course due to my mental health status at the time of editing. In the before times, all that would have seemed manageable most days. Now, I have way too much time to think. My mental health sucks, and so I find homeschooling and coursework extremely difficult at the moment. As a person who has inattentive attention deficit disorder, I have few executive functioning skills and the little help I had with them has been taken away. You might read this and look at me with the thick glasses, using a power wheelchair, unable to speak at times, and really wonder, who are you? What do you have to give to society? I had much to give to society in the before times, and I still have much to give now. I just give in different ways. In the before times, I gave by volunteering, by educating kids at camp, and by helping kids be the best kiddos they can be at the ball field. I lived and still live guided by my Christian faith first and by the promises I made as a youth junior leader and guider with Girl Guides of Canada and as a scouter with Scouts Canada in the past. Though I am no longer involved with scouting and guiding in a formal manner, these things still greatly inform how I live now. My faith is always the thing that keeps me going, living, and hoping. Now things have changed somewhat. I still help people on a volunteer basis, but online. I mentor parents who have kids that use AAC to communicate and help them give their children words. Words are a basic human right. Without words, one cannot independently access any other human rights guaranteed under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms or any of the conventions and declarations that the United Nations has made, guaranteeing all people of the countries who are signatories to the, the rights contained in those documents. If you do not have words, either through sign, communication, letter board, device, verbal speech, or a combination of these that you can use to speak on your own, someone has to be there to speak for you. And that is not always possible. I strongly advocate for the rights of people with disabilities, such as those who are deaf or neurodiverse. In the before times, I did this through education everywhere I went. During this unsettling time in history, I write politicians and radio shows and advocate for rights online. In this time of so many new ways of living, I work very hard to be thankful, to see the good, to see that there is a life worth living. It is much, much harder to do now than it was in the before times. I try hard to do this because without gratitude and joy, life would seem meaningless. As I end this piece of writing, I am reminded of a part of the Bible in the Old Testament that was put into song very famously. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Note 5. Note 5 reads, Ecclesiastes 1, 1. And I am reminded that this too shall pass.